ABC. Haven't uh, made a video for some time, but uh, I've got so much stuff here. I thought I'd uh, run through it and show you what I've got. I've been in London for two weeks. I work in London anyway during the week. Normally come home at weekends, but my wife was with me uh, last weekend, and we went to go and see Depeche Mode, where I had VIP tickets and got some rather wonderful gifts there, which I'll show you as well. So, um, without th further ado, let's uh, let's crack on. So first off, we've got. Um, Depeche Mode, Spirit, signed vinyl from the gig. Um, I got to do a meet and greet, just myself and my wife, and we went down and saw the band, um, shook their hand, had a photo taken. I haven't got the photos back yet, but uh, I've been promised they should come by the end of today. Uh, we also got a pass. And there was a fun computer spray paint system and we, I just put that on and then it sort of superimposed it over a picture of the band. So a nice little takeaway there. So um, as you can see here, rather greedily, because my wife was with me, she also got a copy of Depeche Mode signed as well. So uh, I have two copies of that. Not sure what I'm doing with a second copy yet, but we'll see. So um, as you can see there, James found this lurking in, um, still had shrink on it, lurking in uh, one of the record stores in London. Uh, it's 214 press, it's got really nice shiny sort of overlay on the, on the skull there. Double album, mint condition, so very pleased to have that. Um, La Petit Moor. You can see that. That's the name of the album, so great find that one. Wasn't too expensive either. Managed to pick up a, a half decent copy of Who Will Save the World? The Mighty Groundhogs. Been sort of after this for some time. Um, great condition sleeve, cartoon on it, story. Um, not sure where the album goes. There's a bit of a crease there, it's a bit of a shame. Not sure where the album goes, but uh, just chucked it in there. It's on the United Artists label. But um, very nice to find that. Looking forward to spinning that later. That's that one. Um, I'm a sort of on-off XTC fan, but uh, when I see them in the wild like this, in this condition, um, they're well worth picking up. This is on the Virgin label. Um, it's the Virgin red with the green stripe and um, it's an original press, you can see down there with the uh, 78 Virgin logo on it. Um, great album, pleased to pick that one up. Um, it's a special low price. Um, always on the lookout for Jeff Beck. Um, this one was only £4, I'll try and get the sticker off later. Um, I'm not sure I've heard this, but um, it's on the Epic label. It's got a really nice sort of um, mottled sleeve, uh, black in it. So look at the let's look at the label. It's stuck in there. Yeah, it's on the classic sort of blue epic with the yellow epic writing. One of my favourite. Um, sorry, I'm just having a slurp of slurp of coffee. One of my favourite um, albums of all time is Steve Winwood's very first solo album just entitled Steve Winwood, and it was on Island. And uh, it has an identical sort of formatted sleeve to this. So it's a mottled, quite thin paper with that sort of colouring on. It's got a sketch of uh, Steve Winwood on it, and on the back, similar sort of drawings to this. And um, well back in um, 78, I think this came out, I picked this up because it looked like the Steve Winwood album. And I noticed that um, Steve Winwood played on this as well, along with some really other island sort of staples at the time. And um, like Sly Dunbar, Robbie Shakespeare played in a lot of the island uh, reggae stuff at the time. And um, of course I went and sold it when I sold all my vinyl and I found a copy yesterday morning. and. Um, it's probably one of, and notice it's a factory sample, not for sale, so I hope it's okay. 
but uh, it's an absolutely amazing album. It is reggae, it's pretty um, spiritual, but it's also fabulous. And uh, I got that at Reckless, and it's on the um, Bat Island label, which was the right one for the time. Um, you know, the day and the night island label, which I really like. So very, very pleased to have picked that up. It's called um, Hail I Him Chapter One. And I never saw a chapter two, so maybe there never was one, but very pleased to get that. I've, I've uh, recently got into Michael Chapman and uh, he's sort of like um, uh, a sort of almost a UK Dylan stroke folk artist. Um, I sort of picked it up because there are similar, I picked him up because there are similar tracks, uh, artists and, and uh, sa tr uh, sounding tracks to his on uh, in Al Stewart's catalogue and people like Tim Rennick um, play for both Michael Chapman and, um, and Al Stewart. So it made me sort of have a look at this and I found a Michael Chapman up reissue not long ago and really enjoyed it. So I thought, well, that's interesting. Um, let's have a look at uh, look at some of his other albums. So whenever I see them, I pick them up. Another interesting aside is that the second album um, by Michael Chapman has a sort of, has a recorded sound that sounds incredibly like um, Bowie's Hunky Dory, and I and I hear that. Uh, Mick Ronson was into the Michael Chapman album and sound and reproduced that sound on the Hunky Dory album. So it sounds incredibly like the Hunky Dory album, which is which is uh, which you have to hear to believe. I did post something on Facebook about it, but it's got that sort of tremoloed, slow tremoloed guitar with a chorus on it, and it does sound incredibly like the same mix. Anyway. I digress. This is uh, Michael Chapman, Life on the Ceiling. Never heard of it before. And um, looking at it, interestingly, like Bowie albums, it was, uh, I know it was cut at Trident Studios, where I used to work, funnily enough, um, by Ray Staff. And he was the cutting engineer. And the first day I went to Trident Studios and, and joined as a T-boy when I was 18, left Somerset, went up to London, got that job. Um, I was called to the cutting engineer suite, which was basically a room... A uh, soundproof room which had the cutting lathe in it. Can't remember what type of lathe it was. Um, and when I got in there, there was Bill Bruford. So, whatever album Bill Bruford was cutting at the time in 1978, the end of 78, would have been the album that Ray Staff was cutting. I don't know what it was. It probably would have come out in 79 because um, most albums that were recorded, mixed, and cut in one year, didn't get released until the following year. So it's probably a 79 Bruford. So if you know the 79 Bruford, um, if you know of one, and I'll have to look it up probably um, on Wikipedia or something, that would have been the album they were cutting. Anyway, I was asked to go and get a tuna sandwich for Bill Bruford, which I duly did, and uh, was a bit sort of stunned rabbit in headlights for me because Bill Bruford was one of my all-time heroes. Uh, having played with Yes, so a nice little side story there. Anyway, <clears throat> this album came out in, let's have a look, because I'm working off the cuff here and I can't remember, 79. And uh, I think it's a live album. Recorded, uh, yeah, recorded at Old Sawmills Cornwall. Uh, maybe not, maybe not. No, I don't think it is. So it's got Dave Mattox on drums, uh, Phil Palmer on guitar, Michael Chapman on guitar and vocals, uh, Andy Richards keyboards, Rick Kemp bass, and who's Tom Allen? Tom Allen was the engineer. And it's on Criminal Records, Pacific Arts. Don't know what the label looks like. I did have a look at the record in the shop just to make sure it was okay. It's It's like... 180 gram vinyl and uh, yeah really nice criminal records label there so I look forward to spinning that one so that's Michael Chapman life on the ceiling now I haven't got any albums at all by dead can't dance 
oh, sorry, Dead Can Dance. And uh, sitting in Reckless Records were two mint condition Dead Can't Dance albums. Uh, they looked totally unplayed, they were opened, but um, absolutely beautiful conditions. I know not, I don't know much about them at all. I know I've heard some uh, Dead Can Dance stuff and uh, they're on 4AD, which always uh, makes me want to sort of have a look at something or listen to something on 4AD. Uh, Rough Trade Records, uh, 1990 this one. So I look forward to spinning this. It's, um, it's called Aeon, A-I-O-N. And we have a look, it's on that, uh, that uh, 4AD label. And it's on bomb-proof vinyl. It really is solid vinyl and lovely sort of waxed cover there. And then I picked up the one that I was really after, which is this one, which is uh, Dead Can Dance Within the Realm of a Dying Sun. And once again, immaculate condition. Don't know whether these are reissues, but they certainly weren't posted as such, and they certainly were not in shrink, so they, had, they were second hand. Lovely glossy cover. Both of them were less than 10 pounds each. Uh, once again, it's on 4AD. Um, so I'm really, really looking forward to spinning this. Um, it's sort of ambient music, but with, um, I almost said real instruments then, sorry about that. Um, but violin, cello, trumpet, trombone, trombone and tuba, oboe, timpani and military snare. So um, lots of drony sort of music, but um, looking forward to spinning those and very pleased to find them. So I'm uh, collecting the reissued uh, Beatles records from uh, D'Agostini um, and they send through the albums. I've, I've subscribed to the whole series and they send them through uh, in, in weird order. And I've just got the Beatles Yellow Submarine and Magical Mystery Tour. Um, but they're beautifully produced. They've got lovely shiny covers that are on once again, 180 gram vinyl. This one has the original US uh, inner sleeve, which is quite exciting. It comes with a booklet with pictures and sort of stories about it. And um, this one's on the Apple label. So authentically reproduced all of the um, cover art and writing is, is as per the original. So i um, very pleased to get that. Today I also got the box for the whole set to go in. Um, which is part of the subscription um, and that was okay but I also got a display frame which I didn't really want which goes on the wall and you can put one of the albums in it at a time but all the glass was smashed in it so I, I'm not going to bother to send it back can't be bothered uh, I probably won't use it anyway and it wasn't very nice it wasn't one of those where you slip it down the top you had to sort of put the album inside which I'm not really keen on um, so I'm really pleased to have Yellow Submarine because it's one I've never bought. I've probably got it on DVD and CD, but don't play it much. But I love Hey Bulldog and All You Need Is Love um, and Only Northern Song. So it's really nice to have that um, as part of this set. Side 2 is the orchestral, um, the orchestrated film score, but I'm not too fussed about that. Um, now the Magical Mystery Tour is fantastic because this one um, is gatefold like the original but also um, which and I love this album it's, it's got so many good songs on it you know the Beatles sort of come up with these songs really quickly for these uh, for the um, that one's on the capital label for the for the movies like they did with help but actually end up with really good songs on them so this not only comes with a sort of uh, inner from um, De Agostini but um, it also comes with a f the fabulous booklet that it originally um, was re released with. So a you know, really good quality um, like story of the film. So extremely pleased to have that one in my collection. Both those I haven't had. And then moving on, of course, Roger Waters. So I know this has been shown all over the VC. Roger Waters, is this the life we really want? Probably not, Roger. And I know you're pretty minty on this one, but 
I actually heard two pre-release songs on uh, Apple Music and one was the title track Is This The Life We Really Want and the other one was Smell The Roses and I have to say absolutely stunning um, to me it's more interesting what I've heard so far than the um, Rattle That Lock by Gilmore I think certainly Waters who wasn't my favourite is certainly bringing out some fantastic albums I mean Amused to Death was just brilliant and then this this one I haven't heard the whole thing yet so I know it's angry I know it harks back to sort of animals type of anger um, you know, anger about the country, about the world we live in. But annoyingly, this seems to have some, some surface scratches. But um, anyway, I'm sure it's fine. Probably just needs to be wiped over. But um, it's in these pretty harsh inners, as you can hear when they go in. So that probably doesn't help. But it is really annoying when you buy an album and it's already got some hairline scratching on it. I don't know if this one comes with a download card. But anyway... Um, crappy sleeve, I think, um, could have been better, but hey, um, potentially a fantastic album. I can't wait to sit and listen to that end to end like I would have done with any Floyd album when they were released. And uh, I'm very excited to, uh, to have that to listen to today. Now, I went from uh, Reckless Records in London down the road to... To Sister Ray, um, which is probably the better of the two, really. I mean, sometimes Reckless, you find some 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 pretty good pickups, but they always sort of overprice them. But um, anyway, in the window, they had this: the box set of Steve Hackett, the Charisma Years, seventy-five to eighty-three, um, and it said the one hundred and thirty-nine price was crossed out. And in its place, it said £39. And I thought, that can't be. So I, w I popped in. And um, sure enough, the guy said, yeah, 39 quid. We've got two, two box sets of these left. And we're trying to get rid of them. So I don't know why. So I just had to pick one up for that. I mean, it's got all the early albums on. The best one, which is Voyage of the Acolyte. Um, Please Don't Touch, Spectral Mornings, Defector, Cured, Highly Strung. And then it's got some three live albums. So... I know what I like live at the Theatre Royal. I think that's like an extended 12-inch. But then you've got live at Reading Festival 81 and live at the new Theatre Oxford 79. I know loads of people have shown this on the VC, so I'm not going to show the whole thing, but there's, there are the albums. Uh, they're all 180 gram. They've got the original um, label design. So I think Voyage, Please Don't Touch and Spectral Mornings come on the pink mad hatter label so that's not the pink charisma it's the it's the next one with the large hatter and then the rest come on that blue uh horrible sort of 79 80s label the more computerized graphic one and then i think the live albums on this are actually printed with the original charisma hatter label so let's have a look let's have a quick look so this is live at the theater oxford 79 it's a double. Um, it's got Please Don't Touch Tiger Moth Everyday Narnia, so his own stuff there. Red Flower, Ace of Wands, Carrot the Vicarage. And then he's got an acoustic medley with Horizons in there and Blood on the Rooftops, which uh, I'm sure that would be fantastic. And then Record 2 is Octagon, Spectral Morning, Star of Sirius, Shadow of the Higher Font, uh, Clocks, and Racing In. So, a mixture of sort of Genesis and other like yeah so this these come on this really nice charisma large hatter label and they really are um, you know thick vinyl um, so very pleased to have that you know 39 pounds god you pay that for one album these days I mean the the George Harrison reissues even on single vinyl were like 30 quid uh, even the Beatles ones were, were really expensive um, for their single albums, which are really short as well. So incredible to get this whole set for 39 quid. I am going to get the other live one out while I'm at it. Why not? Let's just push that over. And this is live at Reading Festival. I don't know what the quality of these is like, of course. Um, it says Unbreakable Vinyl Record there. <clears throat> so this has got 
Yeah, it's most of his own stuff. Spectral Mornings era. No Genesis, but never mind. Uh, and that's on the blue Charisma, because it's probably... No, that's earlier. I don't know why that's on the blue. They've obviously just decided to put that one out on the blue vinyl. Oh, uh, probably it's 81. Yes, of course. So 81 would have been the blue label and 79 still the original Charisma. So incredibly pleased to have that set. Um, so all in all, some pretty good records there. I'm going to have to uh, now focus and spend some time listening to those. I understand it's a wet weekend, so maybe a good chance to, um, to take a look. So VC, thanks for watching. Um, slurp a coffee. Uh, see you all later. Hope you like the video. Um, I do have loads and loads of other albums that I haven't um, put on YouTube. Not sure whether I'm going to bother or have time, but uh, I'll see what I can do. Take care. See you soon.